All right, guys, so to get started here, uh, we've got Andre Pop. He's the director of uh, Structural Heart for uh, Ascension in Illinois. We're going to talk about something that's, uh, you know, we've been making some changes in my program, and it's checking UAs, and what do we do with these before procedures? Go ahead, Andre. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, so this is funny because we've been talking about doing these talks, and uh, I think you mentioned you know, uh, what do you guys do about UAs? And honestly, I have a very highly functioning uh, valve clinic coordinator, and I never get to think about these things, right? These things get done by magic, and uh, it's wonderful, right? Because I show up in the morning, put the valve in, and then a patient goes home and whatever. Uh, But the reality is that there's a lot of stuff in the background that's happening, and we kind of need to understand its importance because a lot of time these things are uh, contributing to delays in care. Um, and if you treat something that does not need to be treated, especially with antibiotics, uh, there may be problems. So um, should we check uh, urinalysis before TAVR? Uh, we've been doing it forever. Uh, it kind of comes from the days of um, surgery. And the reason that you check a UA before TAVR is because you assume the patient may have a urinary tract infection without symptoms. Because if they have a rip-roaring urinary tract infection, obviously you should treat them. But if you have somebody who's asymptomatic, you're essentially screening for asymptomatic bacteriuria. So that's the uh, term of the art, ASB, asymptomatic bacteriuria. If you're looking at the literature, that's what you're looking for. Um, then the second question is, okay, now I have a positive urine culture or bacteria or whatever. Um, and what do I do with it? Right. There's no reason to do a test if, uh, you don't know what you're going to do with the result. So if I find that the patients have bacteria in their urine, does it make sense to treat them? Um, is it something that's done in surgery? Is it something that's done in cardiac surgery? Is it something that's done in TAVR? And if there is no benefit in treating asymptomatic bacteriuria, then what's the point of checking a urinalysis? So um, this is a paper that looked at U.S. veterans, uh, which I think is a, a good population because they tend to be older and more similar to our TAVR patients. And uh, basically, they show you that... Uh, treating asymptomatic bacteriuria was not associated with reductions in the risk of postoperative infections, Um, but there is evidence that uh, it can lead to multidrug resistance and other problems. And these guys say you shouldn't check um, uh, urinalysis before you do surgery. So this is general surgery. Um, These are patients uh, who are undergoing cardiovascular surgery And they show you that there's no uh, data uh, indicating that asymptomatic bacteriuria is a risk for surgical site infection in either cardiac surgery or in valve replacement. And they recommend that you do not do urine analysis or urine culture, and you do not treat these patients because you're just basically generating multi-drug resistant organisms. So that's that covers surgical AVR. This is uh, another paper that looked at asymptomatic bacteria before TAVR, and uh, they showed potential harm for treatment, and they show no benefit. So basically, we have data in general surgery, we have data in cardiac surgery, and we have data in TAVR that's telling you that you shouldn't check. Uh, Infectious Disease Society of America recommends against screening um, or treating asymptomatic bacteriuria unless you have a urologic surgery, which obviously we're not doing. Um, There is no benefit to urinalysis before TAVR, and there is evidence of harm if you treat the patients. So why do it? That's it. Hey, yeah, that I really appreciate. You know, we've we've had uh, like I get all this stuff through through Epic. You know, it comes to me. I have primaries reaching out to me. The pre-op nurses on the day of TAV are always like, you know, or other procedures for that matter are, are like, you know, hey, this this patient's UA is positive and they're asymptomatic. Every ID doc I've talked to has said, you know, don't need to treat it. And it kind of dawned on me. It's like, why are we even checking this? Right. Uh, 
when we do all these tests before our procedures, they're not benign. You know, like you said, can get multidruggers in organisms, but not only that, it's an extra test. You know, it puts extra time on the pre-op for the patient. And, um, you know, we've seen things happen and patients, you know, they don't show up because they're on antibiotics and they got confused. So, you know, I think anything we can do to minimize the testing, um, you know, is, is a big thing for these patients. And I think this is really helpful, Andre, to show this evidence. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, people like when I go to my my team and I say this, you know, it's really helpful to have evidence, something to back it up when, when we make a change in our programs. Yeah, I mean, this is the classic, you know, phone call the day before TAVR, two days before TAVR, right. the morning of TAVR. Uh, oh, the UA is positive. What do you want to do about it? You know, and uh, it messes your schedule. It messes the patient's schedule. If you delay their procedure, you're exposing them to risk. They really need their valve done. So everything that w- does not change our management, we shouldn't be doing. And the evidence clearly states that we shouldn't be treating these patients. That's terrific. So, awesome. All right. Thanks, Andre. Appreciate it. Thank you.